Hi, it's Lou Collins here and today I'd like to share with you my tips for clean and simple cards. Do you love the look of a clean and simple style but sometimes find that the simple part isn't exactly living up to its name? Well this is going to be the video for you. I'm going to give you my top tips for achieving clean looking cards in absolutely no time at all and after following along with this tutorial you will be batch making a super fresh, simple but stunning cards in no time. So let's get started. Tip number one is to reduce the amount of elements on your card. Now I usually work with three main elements. They are a title, we, we always have a title on the card or a sentiment. They are going to be a splash of colour or a block of colour and they're going to be some sort of organic looking image. So this is going to be a nice contrast between your block of colour and then your nice flowing organic shape here. So what I'm going to do is show you two different cards using this theory. So the first one I'm going to do with the butterfly. I've taken this block, this panel of cardstock that I've already made. This has got some ink splodging on it. I basically picked up some ink off of a blending mat once I'd finished using it. I spritzed it with water, dabbed this in, picked up the ink, dried it, and I've now trimmed that down into a rectangle shape. And I'm going to place that on my card. Now with any card that you want to look clean and simple, you want to leave a lot of what's called white space. So that's a lot of this uh, space around the card that's not filled in. We're going to focus in on a small portion. And in my mind, if you're doing a clean and simple card, you want to look at around about 50% of the card being filled, no more than that. So I'm going to place my blocky image down. I'm calling this a blocky image because it's got nice sharp edges. So it's a nice solid image there, something to draw the eye in. And it's bright, it's contrasting. It's going to really stand out against that white. Now, as I said about the butterfly, I'm going to use this butterfly. This is what's going to add that gentle touch to your card. So it's going to, so it's going to soften everything. So I'm just going to apply this with a little bit of wet glue to the body. And I'm going to place that so it's overlapping that block of colour there. But I've kept that the same colour as my card base, nice and clean, a bright white. Now to contrast with all of this, I'm going to put a title on. My title is going to come up to this area here and it's going to be black because this is really going to stand out against everything else and it's going to draw your eye across. So you've got the really bold black sentiment, the beautiful colouring underneath and then the main image as well. So your eye will really be drawn around the card. So I'm going to put the word happy and the word forever. My sentiments I tend to try and mix the fonts and again I'm going to overlap that border there. So that is three elements to this card. Let's get these glued down. There are three elements and that's already enough for this card. So the three main elements, as I said, I don't need to add much more to that. I'm going to add one more thing, but I wouldn't call it a main element. It's a slight embellishment and that just is a little bit of sparkle. Now I always think these are like your additional extra that you can add on to absolutely any card and they really do help things if you need a little bit of sparkle or a little bit of pop. So that's enough gems and there's my clean and simple card made in absolutely no time but sticking to that rule of three main elements. Now let, let's use that rule again and create another card very quickly. So I've got a different card base here, I'm going with a square and I'm doing the same. Rather than a handmade piece of coloured cardstock, I'm going with a piece of pattern paper. I've put my foam on the back. I like to use foam as much as possible with clean and simple cards because you get that little bit of a drop shadow between the two layers and that just adds to the overall effect. So with this one, it could be, rather than a pattern paper, it could be that you've ink blended a piece of cardstock or it could quite simply be a plain piece of cardstock. I'm going to put this off center. So rather than in the middle as we did with the first one, pop it there. My images here, my organic images as I call them, are snowflakes. So these are going to be positioned in the same way as before. I'm going to pop them so that they are overlapping the edge of this uh, block of color here. 
just little dabs of glue all over. So I'll overlap those two and I'll pop one in the middle. like so. My sentiment here, very much the same. I've gone with a black that really stands out. And this time our uh, white space, rather than being all the way around the edge, it's more to one side. But I think that is still a stunning card when it's finished. Let me just glue down these sentiments. I've just added an extra little snowflake there because I think that needed it in that space. But again, we're looking at a very quick and simple, clean and simple card there. Uh, so the two are both different cards, different colorways, but the same sort of concept. So we've got those three main images, the block of color, the sentiment, and then your organic image. Now it's definitely going to keep things more clean and simple if you keep that organic image uh, the same color as your card base or certainly at least just one solid color rather than bringing in too many other colors that may um, contrast and go against your block of color there. Tip number two is to keep everything neutral besides one pop of color. So the exception to this is if you want your pop of color or your area of color to be rainbow, then I would go for a true rainbow so you get all of the colors in there or certainly uh, lots of shades within one color uh, and everything else, black, white, uh, maybe put in a little bit of craft in there, but otherwise all neutral colors and I very much like to go with the bright white and the solid deep black for that contrast as well. So for this card that I'm going to show you, I'm going to stick to that rule. I'm also going to incorporate the rule of three main elements as well. So I've got my organic shapes here, which also incorporate my color as well, my block of color, so they are there. Um, I've got this panel of parchment here, which would usually be the block, the solid uh, strong shape there, but that's a, a parchment or a vellum, so that's almost clear. So it's not going to be as obvious as the blocks of color were on the previous cards. Then I've got my sentiment, again, I'm using black. Uh, my embellishment as such, as I use the gold sequence on the first card, um, is going to be little droplets of black ink spray. So these could be a watercolor or something. These are just going to go into the background because I want my background to have a little bit of color, not a lot, a little bit of texture more than anything. Um, but I certainly don't want to add any additional color. So I'm going with the neutral color of black against the white. So I've just sort of just splatted that on a little bit in the background for that texture. I'll wait for that to dry before we go to the next stage. So now we're going to add our color and I've cut here the same leaves all uh, from rainbow colored cardstocks and I stick with the rainbow if I'm going to be using more than one or two colors. I wouldn't suggest using more than uh, two colors really is probably your maximum. Like I say, if you're going to be using a blue, it's okay to go with lots of different shades of blue uh, or green as we did in this card here, as long as it's within the same color range. But if, you're, if you want to go for say four colors, this is where it starts getting a little bit uh, more messy and this is where you want to be looking at your color wheel which is the same as your rainbow so my rainbow is red orange yellow green blue and then indigo and violet so you've got your purples so what I like to do is make sure I've got these colors in here then I might slot a few more in so I've got a teal color or an aqua that will go between the green and the blue and then I've got a paler purple and then a pink because that pink will lead nicely back round into the red. So I can put these into a circle. So this is that rainbow that I was talking about. If you're going to use lots of colors on your card, go for all the colors rather than just a few. If you want to go for say three colors, for example, choose colors that are together. So the warm colors or maybe the cool colors. So now the color is all glued down and I've put them into that circle shape, a little bit of spacing before I added glue to ensure they were going down in the right place. I'm going to add my sentiment on and I've got this panel of parchment or vellum that's going to go over the top here just to mute down the colors underneath so that my 
um, letters really stand out. So I'm actually going to apply my letters to the vellum first and then glue the vellum down onto the flowers because I'll know where I can put my glue behind the black cardstock. Otherwise on vellum you will find that your glue will show through so I want to avoid that. There so I've glued those onto that vellum. I'm now going to apply my wet glue or this could be uh, some foam if you prefer to use a little bit of dimension and I'm going to pop this over those florals like so. So there, once again, are my three main elements and I've stuck with the rule, our second rule, of just using a pop of colour and neutral for everything else on the card. On to tip number three. So we're going to be talking about adding detail to your background without adding too much fuss. So we want to add texture sometimes Occasionally the plain cardstock behind just isn't enough even though we're trying to do clean and simple um, and in this case I think it's always best if you can go for a tone on tone effect. So that may be that you are stamping with a watermark maybe to add some details into the background that will be um, not too obvious. It may be that you want to do some clear embossing into your background or my top tip is to actually just add some embossing with an embossing folder. So I've got this beautiful craft card stock here and I'm going to add a layer on the top that is actually a craft card stock exactly the same as the card base but I've embossed it. Now you can of course emboss the whole card or you could put the uh, embossing folder over one side of the card but I like to just do another panel and just adhere that flat over the top because this also then helps to strengthen the card and make it feel more professional as well. So I've run that through an embossing folder. I've chosen wood grain because I'm going for a very natural look with this. Any embossing folder will work. It will add a little bit of texture without overpowering the card and you're still going to be keeping this clean and simple look. So let's finish putting this card together, incorporating those other elements that we've already been talking about. So sticking with the colourways, I'm keeping everything neutral. My pop of colour is these greens. So these are two slightly different greens. They're almost like an aqua hue, uh, but they're very beautiful. And I'm going to be tying those in with all neutral. So I've got my craft card stock and I've got my white, a little bit of black here. And then there's my three elements. So I would take this as my panel, okay, my solid panel because I've got the texture in it. This is my organic shape and this is my sentiment. My embellishment is a little bit of twine, but that perfectly matches the card base. So we're not going to see that. That's not going to jump out as a, at us as oh, another element on the card. Uh, I'm going to be keeping lots of white space as well. So what I'm going to do is just glue down these stems of these two die cut pieces. Now, these... So I've just tied my eucalyptus leaves together using that twine, trimmed the ends off there. I've bundled the two shapes together, but they are slightly different shades, so you can still see the difference. And now I'm going to apply my glue to the backs of these and pop that down in the center of my card. I'm still keeping a lot of white space here. So uh, the focal point is going to be here with the sentiment off to the side and everything else is going to be plain. And this is why I've added in my texture to the background because it adds interest to the background without distracting the eyes too much. Just overlapping my elements there. I think this just helps with that sort of clustering effect to keep the eye in the one place. And I've just added on my sentiment there with some foam pads to raise that up. There's the finished card. Um, as you can see, I didn't glue down some elements of this, so it lifts up and you see those beautiful drop shadows underneath. But again, a clean and simple card, really simple, but very effective. Now talking about the foam pads underneath, this leads us on to tip number four. So here's tip number four, and this is about adding dimension and shadows when you've not got a great deal on your card. I think it's really, really important. So we are focusing on our 
three items most of the time following that first rule but we want these items to be fantastic quality we want them to stand out they need to be standing on their own having a little bit of a drop shadow behind them and this is where this tip's going to come in so i've got a die cut here now i have um, blended some ink into some cardstock to create that rainbow effect following on from the colors everything else is going to be neutral i've got my pop of color in this die cut die cut here so i've then die cut that color paper that i've um, blended into and i've got this thin image now this on flat on a card let me just show you is going to look like this okay so we can see that's not glued down yet but if it was glued down you could see it would look pretty flat it would almost look as if it's been stamped on so let's raise that up let's give it some legs of its own and make it really stand out and look like a good quality professional card the way i'm going to do that is with sticky back cardstock but if you don't have sticky back cardstock, you can just use cardstock on its own. You don't have to use it with the sticky back on it already. I do that for the ease of gluing the layers together. But if you've got this just as plain cardstock and you've got individual sticky sheets, it's a good idea to put the sticky onto the sheet before you die cut. Otherwise, just your cardstock, you can use your glue afterwards. It's a little more fiddly, takes a little more time, but you'll be absolutely fine gluing the layers together if you've got the time. So I'm going to die cut as many pieces of this as I want. Now I would say definitely go for at least four, um, if not more, if you can. So here I've got my four layers of sticky sheets. Um, what I'm going to do now is just start sticking them. So I'm going to peel off the backing. I purposely, um, I've purposely die cut these so that the sticky bit is underneath. So I'm just going to peel off the very top there. Let me take this card base away for now. I've chosen a cardstock that's the same color as my card base, but if you're working say on a black or a craft card base, you can use a black or a craft card stock to do these extra layers with. So I'm just going to fold down a small amount of the backing and I'm going to place my colored die cut over the top of this sticky one. So just focusing on one area, press that down and work my way around. This is why I've not peeled all of the backing off because I want to just concentrate on one small area at a time without worrying about what everything else is doing. So work my way around this section, putting everything in place, lining it up before I move on to the next part. Okay, so I'm happy with that where that's laying. So I'm now going to peel back some more of this backing just very carefully just a little bit more sort of a, a couple more letters and now because you've got the top bit lined up it should be pretty easy for you to lay down the rest of the die cut in place as you start putting more and more layers onto the back of this it will get sturdier and sturdier and you'll find it will get easier and easier to be placing those layers so continue doing this until you've got your first layer on the back and then once you've done that you're going to repeat this until you've got all four layers or more of your die cut panels on the back of your coloured piece. So there I've now attached those four layers of cardstock to the back of my originally ink blended piece. Um, it's not absolutely perfect. I probably with more time could have lined that up a little bit better, but I'm happy because I've used the color of the card base for these anyway. So once this is placed on here, um, that's not going to show up. So I'm going to glue this on here in a moment, just using the fine tip because I don't have the adhesive backing on this piece. Um, the adhesive backing was on the other side, the front side of each of the die cuts. Before I do that, I'm just going to add a little bit of black contrast and I'm going to do that with some stamps that came with this die set. So there I've glued my Because Die Cut onto my card and hopefully if I just hold it the same way as we did in the beginning, you can really see the difference, that drop shadow there. Um, it looks so much better. It looks almost as if it's a chipboard or a plastic or enamel. Um, piece that's been put on there it looks fantastic 
so just to finish this particular card off I'm going to come in with my embellishments I've got my color I've got my block there I've got my nice neutral background I've worked with the uh, the colorways that I spoke to spoke to you about the neutral colors and the splash of color um, and yeah and I've also got the white space down the sides but the last little bit is just to pop some of these enamel dots around the area there And there's that finished card. So here are our five clean and simple cards that we've created during this video tutorial uh, very, very quickly because we're keeping to the same sort of process for each one and it does make everything a lot easier. Now I have two more quick tips for you. When you're working with clean and simple, one of the giveaway words there is clean. So make sure things like your hands, the uh, plates of your die cutting machine, the surface that you're working on is all absolutely perfectly clean. So the last thing you want is a little ink splodge or a dark mark, or even when you're going through your die cutting machine, some of those little bits of paper get in there and they leave little indentations. So be really careful to keep everything clean, smooth, and bright white if you're going to use white make sure it's a lovely bright white and off-white uh, an ivory color doesn't give that clean and simple look i feel anyway and sharp edges so you want to have those clean sharp edges to all of your cards and this means using dies using punches uh, making sure that your trimmer blade is perfectly sharp uh, reasonably new and it's not wearing so it's not going to feather your card stock things like um, tearing elements things like hand cutting elements aren't quite going to give you the same effect. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this and you'd like to see more, please do hit that subscribe button and I will link down below all of the elements that I've used in these cards throughout the tutorial. Bye for now.